The American pika lives in one of the harshest habitats on this planet, the alpine tundra. And even though they live in this extreme, cold environment, the pika does not hibernate. But the environment around them is changing. Therefore, the pika has to choose, adapt or go extinct. Hi, my name is Fleur Farrow and I am a biologist up here in the Colorado Rockies and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the pika, which is an awesome animal that lives up in the mountains and it actually lives in a very harsh habitat. So it's kind of crazy to think about the fact that they can actually live in this harsh habitat, but they have a lot of cool adaptations to help them do that. So to give you some background on pikas, there are 25 species worldwide, two that are found in North America. The one that we're going to concentrate on is going to be called the American pika. Um, so they live high up in the alpine tundra, that's the ecosystem that they like to live in, and they don't migrate and they don't hibernate to deal with these crazy harsh winters that they have. So, like I said, they're going to have these awesome adaptations to help them deal with it. One thing that they're going to have is a high metabolism. So they're going to keep their body temperature up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty warm if you think about the fact that we're at 98.6. So that is actually going to cause some issues for them with some things that are going on in the environment that we'll talk about a little bit later. So they're small mammals, they're related to rabbits, and they're really cute. They have um, a little round body, they don't have a tail, and then they have cute little round ears. So they are related to the rabbit in the fact that they're in the same family, but then they branch off because they obviously have a lot of differences if you think about that. So as far as the habitat that they like, I'm sitting in prime habitat for pikas. They really like talus, which is actually going to be these big rocks that you see here that are all broken up. And that's a result of rock falls that have happened periodically through time. What they like about it is that there is a whole bunch of little crevices that they can crawl into, and that's where they kind of like to live. So pikas are herbivores, and their diet consists of wildflowers, grasses, forbs, and moss. They also are going to practice something called coprophagy, which means they actually eat their own feces, which I know sounds gross, but it's an actual way that they're going to help themselves survive up here. So the first time they poop, it comes out green and it's full of nutrients. And so what they'll do is either they'll eat it again right away and then it'll come out brown because they've gotten most of the nutrients out of it, or they'll actually store it for later in the winter so that they can have a food source if times get a little bit tough. Um, so the way that pikas are going to get their drinking water is a question people often ask because up in the mountains there's not a lot of water to be found. So if you look back here you can see all of these different rocks and sometimes there's going to be little pools of water underneath them. So that could be one place that they could get their water to drink from. And then they get a lot of the moisture from the plants that they eat. So the pika is going to be an herbivore and they're going to eat plants like we said before. And so what they're going to do is they're going to take these plants and they're going to lay them out on the rock and they're going to let them dry out. That way they can save them and preserve them for the winter months. And so we call those hay piles. And hay piles are gonna be composed of wildflowers, grasses, all different types of things. And what they'll do with these hay piles is they're going to put them into their nest and eat them all winter. One of the problems though, is that mold can start to grow on them. So they take poisonous plants that have toxins in them called phenols, and they'll put those plants in with the other ones. And what'll happen is that poison will act as a preservative. So then they can actually preserve their plants, not have any mold growing on them, and the toxin will decrease in its potency throughout the winter. So at the end of the winter, they can actually eat those formerly toxic plants, which I think is a pretty cool idea. As far as the way that they are going to have their life cycle, they become sexually mature when they're only one year old, which makes sense if you think about the fact that they are related to rabbits. And so they're going to have two litters per season. Usually one of the litters is going to die out. They only have like two to four babies per litter. And so they'll have a second litter to kind of make up for that. Pikas are going to be extremely sensitive to temperature. They don't like it when it gets too cold and they don't like it when it gets too hot. So what's going to happen is they're going to have adaptations to try and deal with that. So let's talk about the high end. Um, they can't handle temperatures over 78 degrees Fahrenheit. If it gets hotter than that, they're going to die because they're going to overheat because they have that high metabolism because they don't hibernate. So some ways that they're going to deal with the hot temperatures in the summer is they're going to burrow deep into that talus and they're also going to limit when they're going to be active to dawn and dusk. So that's another reason that they live very high in elevation is because they can't handle really hot temperatures. Now the other end of the spectrum is they don't like when it gets too cold. 
So if it gets below 14 degrees Fahrenheit, they could die as well. So what they're going to do for that is they're going to use the snowpack as a blanket. So the snowpack is going to get real thick and it's actually going to act as an insulator and keep the temperatures inside their nests a little bit warmer because they're creating all of that body heat. So they are very dependent on that snowpack to keep them warm. So that is the story of the pika. In the next exercise, you'll be analyzing actual data about the pika to discover what's happening to the pika as the world around them is changing.